welcome everybody. I am Bonnie Bruder and you are watching the Ask Bon Bon Show, real conversations about what matters most, where we bring you the people and the tools to create you. This segment is part of our Enlightened Learning segment, and we are talking about a very important topic today, and we are talking about parenting. In just a minute, I am going to introduce you to an incredible expert and someone that has a very different view than I had been exposed to on parenting. And he is not only an expert, an author, a speaker, a coach, but he is the voice of single parents. Matthew Sweetwood, welcome to the show. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Thanks for having me today. Thank you so much for being here. So when I met you, we started to have a conversation, and it was just something that I had never considered. You are a single parent of Th five. That's right. I, and I raised the kids from the time they were little. Yes. And so you have a very different uh, message than most parenting books out there. Can you tell our viewers just a little bit about you know your story and how this all came about? Yeah. I mean, for me, it really, my parenting style came from being a man. You know, you, most of the parenting things that you read and most of the discussion about parenting is what moms do as parents. They tend to be the primary parent. Dads, for, you know, for a long time, have been thought of as the secondary parent or the substitute parent. But that's changing today. And I really, you know, find myself pushing that agenda forward as really as hard as I can. I try to parent like a, like a man. And it wasn't until I learned that I can parent like a man and actually raise successful children that I knew I, I had something. Wow. Fantastic. So how old were your children when you started parenting alone? Well, their mom left them when my youngest was 18 months old. So just, you know, barely wow. walking. And my oldest was eight. So I had five children between 18 months and eight. Oh, my goodness. And we had a conversation and you shared some of the things where, you know, that to me were shocking, but it's something you've probably dealt with every day. Where it's not the typical where there's a single father, right? You see single mothers all the time. That's but right. But can you share some of the things that you faced when in conversation and when people found out your situation? Right. I mean, one of the one of the difficult things that you face, particularly if you're in a community or something like that, is there's a there's a certain amount of people that really don't believe that a mother could leave her children unless you've done something to her. So people are suspicious of dads to start with, like why are you with the kids? Some people can't even really reconcile it, but the fact is I believe right now about one out of every four single uh, parent family is actually headed by a father, which wow. is something that you would really be shocked to, f shocked to find out. Yeah. The other things that you face are sort of a general level of a uh, lack of confidence that people have in you. They sort of think that dads aren't really as good a parent and they have to kind of direct you. you know? <laughs> and, you know, we can figure it out, too. You know? Like you make lunches. Uh, that's right. <laughs> right. I can recall one instance when I got a call from the school. They didn't, they didn't like the lunch I had prepared for my children. I, of course, did the Jersey thing to them, which was told them not to speak to my child again. You know, <laughs> I know how to feed my kids. They're, they're just fine. <laughs> Fantastic. So what are some of the key learnings that you share you know, when you're doing coaching with somebody that may be in your situation. Right. I think, I think what it really is, is it, I, I sort of break it down into levels. You know, there's a spiritual level and there, there's an actual performance level. And I think on a spiritual level, I think if your heart's in the right place, if you really, really work at it and you really care and love your children, basically what you're going to do is going to be okay. You know, parents always sort of worry about this. I think this is true for all kinds of parents in this fact that, they, you know, how my kid's going to turn out? Am I doing the right thing as a parent? And the thing that I learned along the way is that the little things aren't quite as important as the overall message and the overall approach that you take. And I really worked hard. I loved my kids. I tried to do the right things. I didn't always do the right things. But in the end, they turned out pretty well. So I think that if your heart's in the right place and you try really hard, it's going to be okay. If you really believe that, I think that's going to happen for you. And then there's really the practice things. You know, having children is, it's, it's different than anything else. There's no break to it. It's not like even owning a business like I do. It's not work. It's not anything. It is a continuous 24-hour, seven-day-a-week endeavor. And once you embrace that and you realize that there's rewards that come from that, I think that um, you really end up with the right attitude and the right approach. Fantastic. And so you, you have a book coming out. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? I can. Um, we're, we're right. It's, it's sort of in the process of, of going along, as you know, with books. Uh, the title of the book is going to be called Man Up. Oh, I love that title. Right. And that's really what I ended up having to do because I was a kid. I always like to say that. I mean, we're talking almost 20 years ago. I had these five little children, but I was a child myself. I was in my late 20s. I, I mean... I didn't really know what I was in for. And one of the things that I always like to talk about is how my children raised me. They raised me from being a boy into a man. 
And so the story is about how I manned up and actually took care of my responsibility, which is really a big issue in today's world, you know, about men actually doing that and manning up and taking responsibility for their kids. Because I certainly could have ran away. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of people do. The reason that I like your message so much, it's, it's again, when, when we started talking, it wasn't something that kind of occurs to me. I had just, I shared with you, I had just read the book, um, Unconscious Parenting, and it's all it was written by a woman, a doctor, and, and that's generally what people talk about when they're talking about parenting. But then it made me think after I thought, whoa, well, that's interesting because I had a mother who was quite sick and she was out of the home a lot. And my father stepped in, but it never occurred to me that he was parenting. It was just dad, like dad's making dinner because mom's not here. And I, after meeting you, I had such an appreciation for, for that role. It's just people don't talk about it in that way. They, it's not part of society's you know, awareness. So That's much. right. And it really goes to the concept that dads really are the secondary parent, but they're really not. They're just parenting like, like anybody else would parent. But there is a difference. I, I really have found that men and women tend to parent a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And really, I didn't think I became an effective parent until I actually stopped trying to parent like a mom. Okay. So when I was left with all of these kids, right, what's the first thing you do? You start remembering how they were being raised by their mom, which wasn't so good in my case, but you try to take some of the good things. And then you look at how the other moms parent and you're like, okay, I'm going to do that. In fact, I wrote a very, very funny blog article. It was a really well-written blog article, well-read blog article. I don't know about well-written, but well-read. <laughs> well-written is, a, I was a math major, so my writing was not always so amazing. Um, it was uh, why I'm not taking them to Chuck E. Cheese anymore. Right. <laughs> and why I think this, the title of the article is I'm not freaking taking them to Chuck E. Cheese anymore. And that's because I walked into Chuck E. Cheese one day and I did that because that's what everybody else was doing. You have a birthday party or you sure. have. And I'm standing in there with, you know, a hundred other kids and a whole bunch of moms in there. And I'm looking at the moms are looking at me like there's something wrong with me. You know, all casting judgment kind sure. of thing. Not that I care. In Jersey, right? I told you that's I don't really care that much. Place smells bad. It's. Uh, I hope Chuck E. Cheese is not a sponsor because if they are, I'll tell you a funny story. Chuck E. Cheese actually um, favorited the tweet on my article, not reading it. But um, really, I went in there. It was a really bad experience for me. And I thought to myself, I'm going to spend the next 15 years with through five kids taking them to Chuck E. Cheese. I'm like, no way, I'm doing that. I'm just not. This is not for me. For but you. I needed to come up with a way to do something with my children that was effective, but it had to be something that I like. And that's really a theme that I've shown in the book that I try to get across in my book is that you can still have a big life. So what did I do with my kids? Instead of going to Chuck E. Cheese, we went out and got season tickets to the New Jersey Devils hockey team. And I started taking my children to hockey games as a way to do something bonding with them, doing something fun. We had birthday parties there. And today we come together. They're in their 20s and we go to games and Fantastic. it's created a, you know. So to me, that's a pretty male way of approaching. Not that women don't like hockey, but I think that was really an, a male approach to, you know, solving a problem, saying to myself, I'm not going to be happy if I can do that. And I think that's a really important element of parenting, that if you parent and you're not happy as a person the way you're parenting, you're ultimately not going to be a very good parent. If you look at it as a jail sentence, which I did in the beginning, but then as I started to turn it around and I realized that I can do things with the kids that were meaningful for me and for them at the same time, I really started to enjoy parenting more. And then as you start, to, the children start to react and 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 really start to grow in a way that you see yourself shaping them, the rewards start to grow too. And today I consider myself one of the luckiest men in the world. I have five children in their 20s and they're all very close to me and they're all sort of, I can take a little bit of credit, right? God and me, <laughs> right? I give God most I'm of the sure credit, a lot of credit. Right? right? I can take a little credit for their success and that to me is really the ultimate reward. You know, it's interesting that you say that. My best friend, Amber, is one of the best um, parents I've seen with, you know, and she, but her lifestyle is very atypical. She and her husband travel around the world. Um, right before Leela entered kindergarten, they did a world tour for three months. And so it's just not like the normal, right? The white pick offense kind of thing. And, um, but I would say like her daughter is so incredible and well adapted. And I love what you said about you have to parent in your style, right? And she got a lot of flack too. People say, well, how can you do that? And they need stability right. and they need to be home and in bed and, and this, that. And it's like here, this girl has had experiences at eight years old that most people don't get in right. a lifetime. See, that's a false premise. The false premise is that a white picket fence is the secret to success. Sure. But it's really not. It's really about your interaction with your children. And like I said in the beginning, I think that if you really apply a lot of love to the children, and you build their self-esteem, and you treat them in a way that's positive, it doesn't matter what you do with them. They're ultimately, gonna t they're ultimately gonna turn out better than if you have them in a white picket fence in a home and you're not paying attention to them or you're just sort of doing what everybody else is doing. I had five kids, so for me it was sort of a, a large-scale experiment. Sure. And 
just if I look at how I ended up having to treat each of the different children. So each child required its own method. Sure. Right? Chapter right there is a chapter from my book. <laughs> and so even if you have one child, that child doesn't necessarily get the same method as everybody else. You have to be adaptive. But ultimately it comes down to how you parent from your heart. And if you do that, I can't emphasize that enough. If you parent from your heart and you do what in your heart is best for the child, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. You can travel, not travel, picket fence, no picket fence. It's really going to be okay. Fantastic. So what's your big vision? I mean, you've already had incredible success. You're coaching, you're speaking, you're an author. Um, but what is your big vision with this movement? Um, for me, I, would, I, I think the biggest aspect would be to change the discussion about fatherhood in this country. Okay. Right now, uh, I, a joke I always make if you uh, Google a single mom expert, right, you'll get a whole list of people and books and everything that do that. If you Google single dad, you get like the local probation department where you can actually collect the delinquent child support from him. So there's really nobody really talking about the issues for single dads. But the bigger issue is that we have, I think in the minority communities, you have up to 80% of the fathers walking away, right? So fathers are viewed in a very negative light in our society. So what I'd like to do is change the discussion so that fathers have a reason to stay. Okay. One of the aspects of my book and what I'm writing about is that I have a big life. So I raised five kids essentially on my own. I, mean, I had a little help during the way, but I raised five kids on my own and I have a big life. I have a life that people want. I have fun. I enjoy myself and I have immense rewards from my children. And so if we can start talking about fatherhood in a positive light, maybe some of those young fathers will want to stay and take care of their children. Great. So right now we chastise them. If they leave, we treat them badly and they view fatherhood as this jail sentence or this responsibility they don't want part of and they want to go off and do something else. But to me, if we can change that discussion and teach them that fatherhood is going to actually give them the best life that they can possibly have. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that when I was young. I looked at it when I first was handed the children. It's like, oh my gosh, 20 years? I probably won't have hair when they're tw in their 20s. <laughs> that, part well. came to, that, part, that part came true. But the part that I didn't realize was the immense rewards that I was going to get for them. So if you could take, let's say, some 20-year-old who has a child and he's thinking about leaving or running away or leaving the mother, if we could give him a view of what's going to be in store for him if he stays there and helps raise the child and turn the child into a productive, wonderful human being, he's going to have a wonderful life. And he's going to get rewards when he's in his 30s and his 40s that he never anticipated. So if we can change that discussion, to me, that would be the big, that would be the ultimate of the movement that I'm trying to do. Let's couch fatherhood in the most positive light and let's make it something that men aspire to as opposed to run away from. Fantastic. So I could talk about this subject all day long, but we're almost out of time. So if people are watching and they want to find you or they want to you know, eventually get your book, what's the best way for people to contact you? Uh, for me, uh, I have, I'm have i available on social media at M Sweetwood. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. Okay. I have a blog. It's msweetwood.com. It's my website. Okay. And I can, be, I can be found out there and I respond to everybody. I promise if you tweet at me, Instagram at me or whatever at me, I will actually <laughs> respond back. I am uh, have a little bit of adult ADD, as they say, and I'm always uh, on social media. And I love to communicate with people. I love hearing viewpoints. For me, that's one of the most rewarding things that I have is that when I write articles, I get I hear from people all over the place, moms and dads all over the place about their stories and things that are going on. So it's M. Sweetwood everywhere. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do. This is a very important message for people to hear. And I'm really excited for your book to come out. And we'll have you back. We'll talk more parenting tips. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks for having me here today. It was really a lot and very enjoyable. Absolutely. And we will be right back. And you're going to meet some incredible children. Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing on our parenting segment, and this is part of our Conscious Education series. And today, as I promised, you're going to meet some amazing children. Now, I'm not a parent yet, but I do play one on TV. And so today, you are going to meet my TV girls. And I'm so excited to introduce them to you because not only are they incredible, they're incredible as actresses, but they are really incredible people as well and are involved in some amazing activities. So I would love to introduce everybody to Isabel, Maggie, and Olivia. Hi. Hi. And I'll let them tell you what role they play in the upcoming soon-to-be hit sitcom, The Family, where all three of them are my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Isabel. I play Constance Smith, who is your average, everyday teenager with an attitude. And I can't wait to start playing this because I am the average, everyday teenager with an attitude. <laughs> 
Hi, and I'm Maggie and Costello, and I am your TV daughter, little Kobe. <laughs> and I'm six years old and I'm in kindergarten. Yes, and Kobe's a little bit of a troublemaker, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm Lana Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smith, and like I'm like the princess of the family, and like I like all the attention. And I'm kind of like Lana because I'm like the princess of the family and I like the attention. Fantastic. So how did you all get into acting? Well, I first started acting when I was five, five maybe six, and I started with modeling. <gasps> and I went through some schools and uh, people were like, hey, she's really talkative. She's really out there. You should get her into acting. And that's how I started. <laughs> that's how I started. And then, then we like she went to like places to like. We went to like, California for like um, a month. A month. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot when you're a kid. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And so, and then you just followed suit yeah. after she started acting. You thought that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna and try that. And when I got into TV, when I was two. You were too. And now, one of you has been in a movie. Is it you that has been in a movie? But yeah, tell us about the movie. Well, shh. Oh, um. <laughs> you were in a movie. <laughs> you will um, be in a movie, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I was in a movie called Swim When a Fish Swim. And the role I play was Rainbow and Maggie. My TV dad called me Rainbow because he was an artist. And my mom called me Maggie because that was my real name. Okay, fantastic. And what was the movie about? Well, it was like about um, Little Fish Swim. <laughs> it was about um, like the mom and dad. Like the dad's an artist, and like the mom goes to like is. <laughs> They're going through some um, troubles, like yes. money troubles, and the dad, the mom wants the dad to. Uh, start making albums because he he's a good singer and he yeah. doesn't want to he wants to keep painting and doing his artwork and okay interesting he, yeah he yeah. So <laughs> fantastic so and mm-hmm. so i know that you um i heard overheard a conversation that you're doing acting because you have a bigger goal in life that you want to do what what do you want to be when you grow up um well i want to be a marine biologist okay and um, with acting, I'm hoping to get acting and raise funds so I can do my research because I want to um, go to the islands and like look at the new um, bacteria, uh, organisms, and I'm hoping to like get acting as funds and raise money so I, I can do that. <laughs> I think that's absolutely amazing because so many people, well, so many people don't know about the acting world, right? And then you move to New York. I'm, I've been here only two years, and you know everybody's talking about it, and everybody's doing it, but you are the first children actresses that I have met um, and it was just really fun to hear you know you would think that if you if you're watching this and you would just hear about a child on TV you just think oh I want to be famous or I want to be this yeah. but when I heard that I thought well that is really incredible that's a very smart thing to do to not only increase your skills but then to be able to you know support your your dreams yeah. and goals that you want later in life yeah fantastic and what do you want to be when you grow up I like um, might want to continue my acting or like be like a babysitter, maybe? <laughs> a babysitter? <Yes. laughs> I was a babysitter from 11 on. It, it's a good good Hi. role. Okay, well, hopefully you can be my babysitter one day. She loves babies. So, beyond that, any goals or just babysitting? Just, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's a good goal. And what about you, miss? Ooh, what do you, you want to be when you grow up? Ooh, a psychic. A psychic? psychic? A scientist. scientist. Oh, a scientist. Oh, fantastic. Did you know the World Science Fair is coming here to New York? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. I used to win the um, science fair all the time. That's fun. I did one on prisms, one on mold. I love, I love science. So good. Well, what are you most excited about for this upcoming role? I think it's really neat that you all are playing sisters, and I get to be your TV mom. It's fun. Um, have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever been in a show before where you more than one of you were together? Well, we did an independent film where these two were my little sisters, <laughs> okay. and it was a horror movie, and oh. I played the younger version of um, the main character, and I had to kill our father. 
So. Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> we like uh, scary movies, so it was fun. <laughs> so this is a lot more fun. Comedy. Yeah. Light Comedy, yes. Great. Are you excited about... Oh, I can't wait to start shooting. I can't yeah. wait. Good, good. <laughs> and I know you do a lot of other things, and you're a very busy girl. So you go to school, you do acting on the side, and then you also do a lot of volunteer work, Yes, right? we do a lot of community service. I, um, for this year, I have over 300 hours of community service I've done. Wow. So, yeah, it's a lot. It's fun to do. I love community service. I love going out and helping people, and we do, we do a lot of it. Um, we are in a, me and my mom are in an organization called Connect for the Community. Okay. And we, uh, through that, we do a whole bunch of our community service. We uh, do coupon, uh, coupons with the community, which is where we get together. We go to um, the shelters and the food pantries, any place where the people might be, and we teach them couponing so that when they have uh, their whatever they have to go shopping, they can use that to get a bigger um, bigger uh, list, bigger, more food for them. Okay. And yeah. That's amazing. We, and yeah. what made you want to do that? Well, my mom was the first person who um, brought us into community service and we do Girl Scouts too, so that brought us in. Okay. And when we're doing it, we just, I like it. I like to know that I've helped people, I've helped someone who had a bad day, their day just got better, they can go out and go buy food for them, go buy clothes. It's just a nice feeling. Fantastic. So wow. the yeah. food that we don't need. We, yeah. We are bo we're all in Girl Scouts. Um, I've been in Girl Scouts for eight years now. I'm, I'm a Daisy. second year cadet. This I'm a Daisy. You're a Daisy? What's your favorite cookie? Samoas and That's spinach. my favorite. I knew. See, I knew we were a match. <laughs> What's your Samoa? favorite? Samoas and Thin Mints. Samo okay. They're, half, yes, they're my Samoas favorite. Samoas are so good. They're so Samoa. good. Samoas. That's your favorite? Oh, my that's the best. I like Thin Mints and um, Samoas are my favorite. I love Thin Mints and Samoas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mom's. That's in, good. Yeah, Mom's my uh, co-leader, and she's her daisy leader, so... Mom's really oh. busy with us. You are busy. <laughs> I don't know how you fit it all in. I thought I was a busy person doing the show, doing the family, working, having a dog. But, wow, you, you really have a lot going on, <laughs> girls. <laughs> and you're writing a book? Yes, I'm writing a book. It's um, sort of a it's action, and it has some romance in it. It's, it's crazy. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that's going on with it. It's called There He Stands. And it's about a boy. His name is Dylan, and he was born with... Um, uh, gift. Uh, he doesn't like to think of it as a gift. He thinks as, of it as a curse because he gets bullied a lot about it. And he was born. He has. He can fight off any infection, virus, flu. He never gets sick, and this leads to um, some struggle with him because he gets kidnapped by this um, group of people who do a whole bunch of experiments on him and trying to get him and get his blood to use against the human race. Wow, that sounds very interesting. And that kind of ties into the marine biology. Or maybe you could find a cure for yes. something. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, great. And what are you guys looking forward to this summer? Um, going water, water skiing. I have to say water skiing and okay. shooting the, um, the sitcom. Yeah, and that's being together be with everyone. Swimming. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I know you guys had quite a train ride. How how long does it take you to get into the city? An hour and forty five minutes. That's a big that track. Yeah, <laughs> big commute. Yeah, you know, we do it all the time though. So it's yeah. we go on there. We bring a blanket. We go to sleep. We have gets a snack. Like we have a snack. Little snack. Some totally. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll ride home with you. <laughs> I just take the train. I don't have snacks. I don't have a blanket. I just have a ticket. That's it. So that's great. You guys really do a great job. Well, I wish you all the success in the world. I know the family is going to be a big hit, yes. and we're going to have a lot of fun there. But I have a feeling that that's just the tip of the iceberg. It seems like you guys are going to have a lot of success in your thank career. You. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. No problem. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Of course. Of course. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> You can still well, say it, we're still on. <laughs> and thank you so much, everybody.
everybody for watching. This has been our parenting segment of the Ask Bon Bon Show, real conversations that matter most, where we bring you the people and the tools to create you. And the conversation doesn't end here. Make sure to follow us on our social media, hashtag Ask bon bon. Come on over to our website and our blog and let us know what you think of the show. And if you have any great parenting tips, we would love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.